Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome back to It's Poppin' where we talk about everything pop-up camper related. Welcome to part nine of the free pop-up camper renovation series. Now real quick, I just wanna thank all of you who have subscribed over the past weeks and months that we've been doing these videos. We really appreciate it. Now, a few videos back, I think I, I, I threw out the fact that it was like maybe nine out of 10 of our watchers were unsubscribed and now it's closing in on seven. So um, we really appreciate all of you guys who have subscribed and are watching and have come back video over video. And um, if you're new here, consider subscribing if you enjoy these renovation videos or even any of the how-to videos that we do. So real quick, what we're gonna do, um, simply put, it's gonna be flooring. So we're gonna install some click together uh, vinyl plank flooring that um, we've actually we actually did in the Starcraft. So um, we've absolutely done this before and it's worked out really well. And then we're going to trim that flooring with a um, half inch quarter round made out of that same MDF material like that everything in the pop-up cameras are made out of. So once the uh, trim's down, we're going to caulk that and then um, we're also gonna use a, um, it's called a, like a carpet trim, but it's like a, I don't know, just kind of like a threshold plate or a threshold trim that we're gonna finish off the area in between the flooring and the door with as well. So that's um, very simply put, all we're gonna do, flooring, trimming, and cleaning it up, caulking, making it look nice. So we will show you everything we do uh, to do that as well as all of like the tools and supplies we're going to be using to accomplish that so if you're looking to do it sell yourself um, be sure to stick around we'll show you um, you know some of the details that it all entails and also be sure to stick around and check out the end results All right guys, so it is flooring week. We're gonna get that vinyl plank flooring installed in the pop-up. Now, we went with a, a vinyl plank called, it's called Devon Oak, and I think it's by a company called MSI, and we got it from Home Depot for about a buck 59 a square foot. Unfortunately, when we went to look um, the other night, it didn't look like they had any st in stock, so we don't know if it's available or not, or what the deal with it is, but, so what we did is we purchased three boxes, thankfully we did, because we can't buy any more right now, and um, we are going to take two of them, mix them up. That way we have a nice variance of you know patterns and what for the flooring. And then if we need to break into that third box for um, any remaining flooring, we'll have that available to us. So let us show you guys um, everything else we're gonna be using for the flooring install. All right, so here's that flooring. Um, and it does have the pre-attached underlayment which is really nice um, it's still not so thick that it can't go under like the pre-existing cabinets or the refrigerator it actually slides right under those so that's really nice other things we're going to be needing um, we have a pretty big carpenter square here pencil razor blade for scoring the flooring and then um, of course tape measure we have a uh, jigsaw here, and that's gonna become crucial for getting um, around some of those weird corners that are present and just making some easy notches. Um, then of course, a notepad here for taking down those measurements as well. All right, so we're gonna explain to you how we go about cutting the boards for just the regular old straight cuts. If you have a nice, even, you know, cabinetry on both sides and you're not doing any intricate cuts. so. Here's what we do, and we're just gonna demonstrate this on a scrap piece of board, but whatever your measurement is from whatever side you're doing, um, you go ahead and measure that with your tape measure. We'll say nine inches right here. So once that's measured off, then we're taking our carpenter square and squaring up on our, our uh, piece of flooring here. Probably don't even technically need a, a line there. And then we're taking, this is a well, it was a brand new uh, razor blade, and then scoring the uh, piece of flooring right down our mark, maybe a couple of times. 
So that way you have your best bet of being able to get a nice clean cut like that. And then once that's done, because we have the pre-installed backing, you'll have to cut through that as well. So that's just a, another simple cut. Well, almost. <laughs> So now you have whatever board you're putting wherever and you're good to go. All right guys, so now that we have a few of the floor planks laid, let me show you what we did. So the first one we started off with a nice straight cut of I think 35 and a half inches and our boards are a little bit longer than that. So we only had to take a little bit off the end. So there's no joints, there's no seams in that first one. And then the second one what, what is what we did is a kind of a 50-50 split. So we took our first board's measurement cut it in half and then uh, had the seam right there. Our third one we did a 75-25 so you can see the seam right there and then on our fourth one we circled back all the way to a full full joint then 50-50 and then lastly we have 25-75 so we're just kind of staggering our joints. Now all the while we're keeping about maybe an eighth to a quarter inch um, at the edges so that way this floating vinyl plank can shift a little bit without being uh, constrained by the cabinets and then of course those will be covered up by the half inch quarter round that we got so this is all pretty straightforward pretty easy to lay you just got to figure out what your measurements are for your specific camper okay so now we've gone ahead and added the next piece of flooring and this one was a just a touch more complicated but not much where we had to notch out this part right here and now how we did that is just measured down how far we needed to come down on the notch and then of course how, how far in and then this was just a simple notch out trying to keep a bit of spacing in there it might be a touch tight but we uh, tried to knock off about an eighth of an inch uh, from what the actual measurement was now it just so happened that this full board came up exactly to the edge there. So then what we had to do, because we only had this little strip here, is then um, cut this board, so this one right here, so that it would line up perfectly with our previously installed board. And that just required a lengthwise cut all the way down until, of course, we hit that corner Okay, so we are going to simply trace a circle where that pedestal table holder kind of goes in and then we're going to remove this piece of flooring and cut out the circle probably simply with the jigsaw. By the way guys, look what I found underneath, another wasp's nest. So the floor is all installed. Um, it uh, actually went in really quick. We were able to do this in one afternoon, maybe four, I don't know, four, maybe six hours. We had a, a break in between. So it went in really well. And I think what facilitated that was the fact that this floor layout is so um, simple. There's not a lot of crazy lines that we have to go around, but not any like furniture, I shouldn't say furniture, but cabinet um, 
I don't know, jut outs that we have to go around. So I, we didn't have to use a jigsaw nearly as much as we did, for example, in the StarCraft. So it was a lot easier in that regard. It was mainly just scoring with the razor blade and then and then snapping. Um, so like I said, it went really smoothly. Let me uh, show you a few spots where we did have to use the jigsaw though. All right, so here's one particular instance where the jigsaw came in handy. And that was because there's kind of this weird trim piece right here, which was a jut out. So we went in here, in here, and then another um, in here to give it a nice flush look at the back of the cabinet. Clearly we're not doing flooring all the way into the cabinets or anything crazy like that. So once this is closed, you know, it looks real nice underneath and you can't see any of the flooring. Now, of course, we're gonna be trimming along the areas you can see, you know, in the corners here, corners over here, and um, definitely like along these big runs, along the wall and such. But for example, like under these really low cabinets, that um, half inch trim definitely won't fit. So we're not gonna be able to put any trim but it doesn't matter because you can't see um, under there and the flooring is flush up against that with just a hair of space. So that's what we're gonna do for those. Now, like I mentioned before, we're gonna put that trim piece along here to make that uh, look nice. Um, and then other than that, I'll give you guys a overview of how the floor looks. So that is it. Right, guys new day and as you know we're all done with the actual flooring install itself so we're gonna be trimming that flooring out so let me show you everything that we use to trim out the flooring okay so here's what we all have first and foremost trim um, what we've utilized and had success with in the past is some of this half inch um, by eight foot um, MDF and it is um, just quarter round, right? So this works really well on covering up some of the um, edges in the pop-up. Also, to cover up um, that threshold in between the flooring and the door, we have one of these um, carpet trim plates, I guess you might wanna call it. And this is 36 inches long by one and three eighths inch. So it'll be plenty wide to cover that door and what we're gonna do is trim this down with a just one of those heavy duty shears, trim it down to size. Um, also, of course, we have an 18 gauge brad nailer and I just happen to have some um, one and a half inch brad nails. I th think those will probably work pretty well. Probably could have gone with some shorter ones but I think these will work just fine. And then of course, to finish it all off, um, I have some just simple paintable um, latex caulk. And of course, what we're using it for is that trim. So, and then the handy dandy caulk gun that we've used previously. And then of course, to run the Brad Nailer, uh, simple um, air compressor uh, for that. And finally, the uh, miter saw, which seems like total overkill for just this half inch uh, quarter round, but it'll definitely do the job to get those nice 45 miters when we're doing those quarters. So that's everything we need to trim out and um, caulk and, you know, just finish up that flooring to make it look nice. All right guys, so we're back inside the camper and I've elected to start uh, trimming on this front wall. So what I'm gonna do and I've already measured from this corner all the way over to this corner, and it's uh, 35 and 5 eighths. So what I'm gonna do is, of course, do a 45 degree miter cut this way, and then on this end, I'm gonna do a 45 cut the other way. And then that way, once I continue on, uh, kind of clockwise around the camper, I'll do a matching 45 and um, that way those uh, corners um, butt up really nicely uh, together and uh, hopefully it uh, it turns out well 
which kind of brings me to a few more items that I forgot to mention that'll of course be handy. Don't forget uh, your tape measure. Um, and then of course a pen and you know, piece of paper can be helpful for just writing down your measurements. That way you don't forget uh, when you're running back and forth between your camper and your, and your saw. So that's what I'm gonna start it off and we'll keep going from there. free glasses that came with our new Brad nailer. I think they're pretty awesome. But I digress. Let me show you our progress thus far. So as you may be able to tell, there's a bit of a gap here in between the trim and the wall. And that's a perfect place for that caulk to come in and cover up that kind of imperfection. Same with kind of right here where this seam on the wall makes the trim jut out. So those are perfect places for the caulk to really, really shine. And as you can see, the 45s didn't come together perfectly. And I'm guessing it's because of this, this kind of gasket type thing right here. So um, I'm definitely not a professional trimmer. So um, I'll definitely rely on that, uh, that caulk to, to come in and fill these gaps up and uh, make it look pretty along with, of course, the uh, nail holes. So what I want to do now is come in here and put down that piece of trim or, or I suppose uh, that threshold uh, plate that'll cover up this area right here and then I can come back and put the piece of actual white trim over that and um, shore up these areas to the left and right of the door. Alright guys so here's that threshold plate all installed. Now like I said what we elected to do is to use the tin snips to snip out these corners on either end. And in lieu of these shank nails that were provided uh, with the threshold plate, the, these ended up being too long because they hit, of course, this um, metal beam in the trailer. So we elected to use some shorter screws to uh, secure that down. So now this is done, of course, we can go back and put in the, uh, the little trim piece there and continue along our wall here. All right, guys, so here is the trim all done. Um, naturally, still have not caulked it, but I will show you the second half of the camper that I did. And essentially, this is what it all looks like. So here is the first half. And then of course that um, threshold plate that we put in between the door and the flooring. So there it is. So next up will be caulk. All right guys, so let's move on to the caulking. Um, just a few more items to add to your list if you're gonna be doing this yourself. Or of course some sort of container with maybe a little bit of water in it for making that nice seam with the caulk. And then of course some paper towel for wiping off and other than that, just the uh, caulk gun and of course your caulk, like I mentioned before. So let's get to it. So the caulking is all done on the trim and of course the great thing about caulk is it hides all of the imperfections. So here's kind of just how the one corner looks but it really gives it that nice finished off look. So there's one more area we need to caulk and that's just at the back of the kind of sink area and here's that countertop that we painted. So I'm just going to throw a bead of caulk 
along this and once again kind of cover up some of those imperfections that happened like when we lifted up the tape and all that fun stuff and here is how that caulk behind the sink turned out so definitely glad we did that really finishes that off quite well so that's it for part nine of the free pop-up camper renovation what did you guys think of that flooring now i know we went with like the click together flooring and a lot of people um have gone with the kind of the stick the peel and stick uh, flooring and have had good luck now the reason we went with the um the click together is simply due to its Mm, ability to ham handle a wider range of temperatures compared to the peel and stick. Um, you know, we live in a climate that can get pretty cold all the way up to quite hot. So we want something that can really withstand those temperature fluctuations without the chance of, um, you know, unsticking. Not to say that the click together has no disadvantages, you know, this is a pop-up camper and the inherent design of the click together is to be able to move and flex around and stuff. So it, it might shift on you, it might move, it might come apart a little bit. So it's not without disadvantages, but uh, nevertheless, we've had pretty good luck with it in our previous two campers that we've done um, renovations on. So if uh, you guys are thinking of doing this yourselves, it's once again, really a pretty easy thing to do. Just requires a few tools, you know, like the miter saw, maybe that jigsaw, um, but that's really it. And um, anybody can do it. So if you're looking for an easy way to refresh your flooring, it's, it's not too hard to do at all. Now you guys already know what's coming up for part 10, and that's the cushions, the curtains, and the valences. And I've already told you this, but the cushions are done, and um, we kind of took a sneak peek and put them in here. And let me tell you, they look really good with the cabinets and the countertops and the new flooring. Um, we're just uh, finally finishing up the curtains, and once those are done, that'll be it. And then it'll be kind of like the big reveal um, and all of the great before and afters from day one up until, shoot, I don't know. It's been uh, a number of weeks, but we've we've taken our time on this camper and there's a lot of fixing up and just a little bit of renovation. So hopefully we'll see you there for part 10. If you're not watching part 10, hopefully we see you out there camping, enjoying the outdoors. <laughs>